Hey everybody, this is Matt. We're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. So, as promised, in this episode, I'm going to show you guys how we shape the neck for our scrap wood guitar. And what you just saw me doing was putting this slight roundover on it with uh, my router table and a 7 8 roundover bit. This is a big honker, too. Um, but it took off uh, everything nice and clean. Um, not everything because it, it's it's more like a neck than it was before but it's got a great big flat spot and of course it's way too thick and what we're going to do now is go over to our deadhead sander and we're going to uh, final shape the, um, uh, the the majority of the neck and then we'll chase after it with um, rasps and chisels and and hacksaws and um, uh, all sorts of other crazy contraptions to make this neck super cool and be ready to go. So enough of the bullshit talk, let's start using power tools. So I like to establish the thickness of the neck in two places. Um, or rough thickness, so that I can just kind of connect them with the uh, with the sander. So that's what I did uh, in the last few seconds there. So this is about 860, and this is about 900. Chris, why are we doing the ferrules now instead of waiting? So we don't chip the fancy paint that we're going to put, or that <laughs> Mike Learn's going to put on it uh, Friday. So everybody, here is the uh, where the the bolts for the neck are going to poke out of, and here are the ferrules that are going to uh, trim out the screws. And um, Chris is installing a and Forstner bit in the drill press, and then. He's going to chase these holes right here down to the same depth that is the thickness of this. And Bob's your uncle. Do you have an uncle Bob, Chris? I don't. I do. I don't have any uncles oh. that are alive. Well, did you have an uncle Bob? No. Oh. I had an uncle Kirk. I, had a, I, had a, I have an uncle Bob still. I have an uncle Larry, too. He has a cool car. Mm -hmm. He's got a Corvette. You see that piece of tape right there that Chris is looking at? That is our low-tech uh, depth gauge. And voila! This is an old drill press, so sometimes you have to find um, techniques that work that might you might take for granted on newer tools. Is there any difference at all in the basswood and mahogany, Chris? <laughs> uh, a humongous one. Yes. All right, guys, it is time to finish up the back of this neck. Um, we have done every single thing up to this point on the router table and the deadhead sander. But as you can see, there's some hard lines right there. That's no good. And this one here, well, that's no good either. Because, well, I mean, actually, you probably wouldn't notice it while you were playing, but it just looks tacky. So we're going to clean that up. And I know I told you we're going to use all kinds of tools, including a hacksaw. We're not going to use a hacksaw. We are going to use some rasps and some planes and some abrading tools and some stuff like that. And it's going to be awesome. And we're going to clean this up and it's going to be good to go off to, um, to sealer here pretty soon. Um, but we've got to finish it up fast because we've got big plans coming for the video that's coming after this one. So I want to get this one out before then. You know the deal. So let's, uh, let's get started. I mean, enough with the bullshit talk. Let's get down to business. All right, guys, we're going to be using my neck shaping uh, apparatus here. It's really not, it's not an active tool. It's just something that holds the neck so that I can work with both hands. It's got a clamp 
on this end that rides in a T-slot and a hole drilled in it so I can put a regular um, C-clamp. And we're going to be using three of my favorite tools, no hacksaws. We're going to be using this dragon rasp, this uh, rat tail file, and this micro plane. Um, if you have some lemons that need zesting, you can use this for that too. By the way, if you come to uh, the guitar building class, you will learn how to do all of this stuff and use all of these tools. So what we're going to do is we're just going to ensmoothen this area here. And the rasp is good to get started, but it is certainly possible to take off a lot of meat with the rasp. The other thing that's tricky is you don't want the rasp to grab this edge here and take a chip out of your neck. That's a bummer. So use caution if you're using any tool upside down like this because you want to um, you want to actually be be uh, cognizant not to chip a place that you can't see while you're working on the spot that you can see. Make sense? So always be feeling for high spots, low spots, unsmooth spots, stuff like that. And even though the rasp leaves um, uh, scratches that you can feel, you can feel uh, you know spots that still need some some work. All right, that actually feels pretty good to me. Now I'm gonna to switch tools. I'm either going to use my rat tail file or this, um, this microplane. I think I'm gonna use the microplane. And what it does that is cool, I think, is it, it removes material, but instead of leaving a low spot like the rasp does, it actually leaves a high spot. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Okay guys, see what I mean here? We've, we've and smoothened this transition here, but we've got a bunch of, these actually aren't low spots, they're, if you will, high spots. And we're gonna clean all that stuff up with the rat tail file. So the rat tail file is, um, is actually a perfect tool for this because it really lets you get in tight um, and it leaves a mostly smooth finish that's easy to, to um, you know, chase with sandpaper. But still, use caution around this uh, this edge here so you don't take a big chip out of it. You wanna know why I keep harping on not taking a big chip out of that? Because if anyone has taken more big chips out of the faces of headstocks than me, well, I'd like to know about it. All right, that actually looks and feels pretty good. Now, guys, you can draw this out and you can take measurements and you can, you know, get um, that uh, that curve finder tool and, and, you know, really worry this to death. But you know what a guitar neck is supposed to feel like. So, you know, the, the, one of the great ways to do this is get a neck that you like and shape your neck um, to match. Okay? All right, so after you've used the rasp and the microplane and the rat tail file, then it's time to switch to sandpaper. And here's a piece of, I don't know, it's a scrap piece of probably 60 grit. And I've got it folded over. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna really do a whole lot of shaping with this, so I'm not pressing super hard. I just want to uh, get rid of those scratches left by the tool. Now, the tricky bit is, as you guys know, you can remove a lot of material with 60 and 80 grit sandpaper. So don't spend a lot of time, you know, worrying over this with the, with the 60 grit, unless you got a block on it and you're trying to shape with sandpaper. But um, the other thing is, as soon as you start to get 
that kind of stuff, switch to a different part of the paper. Or you'll spend all day with a piece of bummed out 60 grit paper or 80 grit. Okay. So what I'm saying is if you haven't watched my video on you're using sandpaper wrong, probably go watch it because sandpaper doesn't get finer the more you use it. It just gets dull. Now we got a new piece of paper here. We're stepping up through the grits. And when you step up through the grits, again, we're not shaping anymore, guys. We are now just smoothing things. And uh, well, I guess I guess smoothing things is, is in a way shaping, but we are really tried to establish the um, the shape with the um, with the cutting tools. And now we are just trying to get rid of all the scratches left by the previous grit. Make sense? 150. I know I got a piece of 120 here floating around somewhere. 320. 120. Okay. Now I when I've got a piece of 120 or something not super aggressive, that's when I like to break edges on the neck. If you don't want to break edges, you don't have to, but I do. All right. 150. All right, guys, so as you can see, our transition from the um, neck meat to the headstock meat is nice and smooth now and looks pretty dang good. Now, I'm feeling it with my thumb there and I got a little bump that I want to sort out. This side feels, ah, this side feels pretty good, but I want to get that out of there. Now, there's some sanding scratches from the uh, oscillating spindle sander I want to get out as well, and they will all probably come out at the same time. Uh, the rest of the neck needs sanded to 220, and um, then it's done. We have one more question come up in uh, the comment section of some previous videos, and that is how we put the 30 degree angle on the fret ends. So let's, let's recap a little bit here. As you know, we've snipped and undercut the frets and we've taken a file and smoothed it out on the, uh, on the edge there. Then now you can buy these or you can make them. I have a block with a 30 degree cut in it that I did on my table saw. And I took just enough off the inside of there to where I could put a file in. And you run the file on the edge of the, uh, on the edge of the frets and it puts a perfect angle in there every time. So um, I even gold leaf the top of mine for some bizarro reason. Um, yeah, so just, uh, you can make one of these or you can buy one, um, but that's how we do that. Okay guys, in the next video, we are very fortunate to have the one and only Mike Learn here to do the paint work on our body. And as you can see, it has been painted Olive drab. Look, in case you don't believe me, this is the same body. There's uh, John's, John's helicopter call numbers there. Um, some people were asking about, about a sag in the sealer coat here. Um, remember, guys, sealer is called, well, okay, the Simtex sealer is called EZ sealer because it is easy to sand. Um, and you can attack it with a block until everything is nice and flat. And that is what we have done here. Um, You've seen in earlier in this video, Chris put in the uh, ferrule holes, and um, man, we are really looking forward to seeing what Mike comes up with for paint on this guy. So, um, that is coming up next, but if you have any questions about what we did in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, give us the thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button because we make videos all the time. Uh, including live stuff, which maybe we'll do, a, well, we'll, we'll definitely do a, a couple of live videos while Mike's here, but maybe we'll do one before then too. Um, if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys cool stuff like this. Um, by the way, speaking of cool stuff like this, if anyone's interested in this guitar, please let me know. Um, we can pre-sell it to you, um, and I have, I have a sneaking suspicion that as soon as you guys see what Mike does to this, you're going to go nuts. Um, anyway, uh, if you can't do Patreon, we totally understand it. Please like and share this video and, you know, 
put it anywhere you can possibly think of to help us spread the word and grow the channel that way. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody.